paying interest or you're losing interest. You're either paying interest or you're losing interest. I get where Dave Ramsey's being consistent because he cannot admit that debt is good or that there's good versions of debt because it would confuse his audience and they would go crazy and he would hurt more people because then people would justify and say, well, this is good debt because I feel good. But the reality is there is such a thing as good debt versus bad debt. It has nothing to do with buying a liability or an asset. It has everything to do with is this decision helping you become wealthier or less wealthy? Don't make a decision because of debt. But if you've made a decision from an investment to to how the most efficient way to purchase a house to the most efficient way to buy a car debt as a result could create more security more wealth more options and you could be a better steward like we could go talk about the bible all day long and we could we could say how this person is way better off Hey everybody, we're going to be reacting to a Dave Ramsey video where he's he's answering the question, do you really need a car? Are car payments good or bad? Um, he, you know, the conversation is very valid. Dave Ramsey has some good points. Um, and I'm going to tell you at the end of the video how I would how I would answer these questions. And are car payments good or bad? I think that's such a misunderstood statement. And I think what I'm going to lay out, uh, are car payments good or bad, will make way more sense than Dave Ramsey's black and white all that is bad. So without further ado, here's Dave Ramsey. Eric is with us in Olympia, Washington. Hi, Eric. How are you? Hey, I'm doing well, sir. How are you? Better than I deserve. What's up? Hey, I uh, have a little bit of a disagreement with my wife. I was hoping you could tip the scales and give us some outside perspective. I want. She wants to move up in car. I'd like to save up and pay cash for the vehicle. However, she thinks that having a larger savings is okay. She, she wants to finance the vehicle and she's okay with having a car payment if it means we have a larger savings. And I tried to explain to her about, you know, depreciation and tell her why it's stupid to get debt. Um, but I think she needs to hear it from somebody else. So I was hoping you could uh, speak to that a little bit. I want to make a point and I couldn't wait till the end. But I, you're hearing this again. You're going to hear Dave Ramsey and this guy talk about debt, and, and they're, they're saying debt is the issue. The, the real issue here is should you buy a, a nicer, newer car, or you should buy a, not a nicer, newer car, or not buy a car at all? That's, that's the discussion. You are going to hear all about debt, and debt's going to be the thing. He's talking about depreciation. It's, again, I'm telling you, it's not the real issue. But just, just hear me out here and see Dave Ramsey's response. Um. The thing I've noticed after 30 years of doing this is that uh, different classes of people, regardless of race, different socioeconomic rungs on the ladder, do different stupid things. Mm -hmm. um, poor people, the rough end of town, play the lottery more often than anybody else. Sure. Lottery tickets are almost all sold in poor zip codes. Um, payday lenders, 800% interest. Uh, rent to own, title pawning. You don't see these places in the rich end of town. You know why? Because rich people don't do them. That's how they got rich. Okay? In the right. middle class, um, middle class struggles with credit cards, with student loans, with car payments, and with whole life life insurance. And they give, right. their, mo they give their money. The middle class ensures that they're never going to be anything but middle class by being in debt to credit card companies and car companies and, borrow and using whole life policies, which are a complete ripoff. And, um, and credit cards. And, and so, the th and then you look at the upper class and go, okay. I'll just, I'll just say I sort of agree with Dave Ramsey on some of those things. Uh, obviously, for those of you that follow my journey, you know that I wrote a book called The And Asset, which is a book about how you can structure life insurance in a way that can be beneficial as a foundational asset. So obviously disagree with that. But I will say for the most part, people that don't know this, um, go don't don't aren't better off using life insurance and credit cards and consumerism so agree but just wanted to point that out what do they do well we want to mimic that because uh, 90 percent of millionaires in america started with nothing and became millionaires they didn't inherit their money they're not crooks and they're not uh professional athletes or regular people they just did right. things different so what do they do when i'm interviewing people on the millionaire theme hour for example i ask them how many new cars have you bought before you were a millionaire they almost always told me one or two and it was the worst mistake of my life i want i want to clarify dave ramsey's saying how many new cars not payments 
Uh, how much did debt cause you, borrowing money, cause you to become wealthy? They almost always say, oh, no, I, d I never borrowed any money that was a blessing. Every time I borrowed money, it held me back from building wealth. And right. so that's what rich people say. And what your broke brother-in-law thinks, or what some journalism student with $82,000 in student loan debt writes on Market Watch, I couldn't care less about. Or is a you know a, a guest contributor from Motley Fool, and they meant <laughs> fool for sure. I mean, you know, I don't care if you're broke what your opinion is about money. You follow me? So we follow the money here. Show me the money. It's a Jerry Maguire moment. And, and if rich people say the best way to get out, of, the best way to become wealthy is stay out of debt, then we do what rich people say because that's how they got there. And right. you you can't you know. There, there's just no disputing that. And the bottom line is this. The average car payment in America now, this month, we got last month, we got data that it, it's now $501 a month is the average. Gosh. Okay. $500 a month invested from age 30 to age 70 in a decent growth stock mutual fund in a Roth IRA is over $5.6 million. We should, uh, we should pull that when I'm talking about Dave Ramsey and mortgages where he's making the assumption that a mutual fund, all it can do is grow up. 12% is conservative when you talk to Dave Ramsey. And um, and so obviously he's taking that, but I will use his same math in a moment to um, prove a point, I should say. That's what a car payment costs you. It's five million bucks over the scope of your life. And so wow. that that's why, you know, rich people don't have car payments because that's how they got rich. And, and so you're, you're, the point is your most powerful wealth building tool is your income and you can't make middle class mistakes with money and be anything but middle class and there's nothing nothing uh, immoral or unnoble about being middle class it's a matter of if you if you eat the same food fat people eat you're gonna be fat right. duh you know and if you want to be skinny find out what skinny people eat and eat what they eat I wish I could do more of that. I don't do enough of it myself. But, I mean, it's still a, it's a great example, right? Find out somebody's been married 50 years and they have a fabulous marriage and they can't keep their hands off of each other. So what did you guys do? Because other people I know about killed themselves. And I want to know how you get a marriage like that, you know? And so I'm going to talk to people who are winning at something and do what they do and not somebody that's just got a feeling or an opinion. Uh, because that'll make you broke your whole life. So all of that is how I came to the conclusion that, and through the faith lens, the borrower is slave to the lender. And I can't find anywhere in scripture it says to get a car payment, although D Jesus did say they were all in one accord. Right. But a bum. So that's, I'm, I'm going to just finish there. Dave Ramsey goes on to saying a, a couple other good things, and, and they find out that this person actually needs a car. And so he's like, oh, get your wife a car, just buy a car with cash and then upgrade in in the future. So, let me let me let me talk about really the big step back is is number 1, a lot of what Dave Ramsey is saying, I I don't disagree with. Meaning like I I think um over if you look at millionaires, a common theme is they don't buy things um for status, and that's the big problem that a lot of people get in. They get into the status game. They buy they buy a home that they can't afford to impress people that they may or may not like. They buy a car that they really is not helping them get further, but it's all about status. They're putting their they're doing certain things with their kids to impress you know other people, and they're constantly on this game. And debt is allowing them to do that. Taking a step back, I agree with Dave Ramsey. Big picture of saying debt has allowed a lot of people to be um, less less rich because it's 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 enabled them it's been an enabler to have them make poor decisions but but then you got to be really careful because then he like he almost speaks down and he, and he talks about interest being bad and you it'd be a five million dollar mistake and if you use the same logic he's he's contradicting himself for instance is a this is this is the advice i would give okay number one when you're looking for a car number one decision is what car should you buy now I'm totally cool by, by saying you don't buy a car if you don't have cash to pay for it. I'm totally cool with, with that statement. Don't buy a car if you don't have cash with it. I mean, I would ask you why you're making that statement, but I think that's a conservative way to, to say. So then if you make that decision and we're, we're, we're based on the same car and Dave Ramsey saying pay cash for that, I would say it depends. You're, Dave Ramsey saying you're going to have $5 million 
if you take that payment that you would have paid and you go put that into a, a mutual fund, but he's contradicting himself because you got to pay cash for that somewhere. Where are you where are you paying cash from a savings account? Where are you building your savings? You're putting that payment into a bank account or whatever, building that up and then cashing it out to pay cash, cashing that out to buy the, the car. So in, in a sense, you're you're saying don't have a payment, but everyone has a payment. You're either making a payment to yourself and putting it into a savings account or into a mutual fund, or you're making a payment to the bank. So the question is, if you're sitting on cash in this example, this person was sitting on 7,000, but if you're sitting on 10, 15, 20, the question is, and you already made the decision on the car, if debt enables you to buy a car that you can't afford, it's bad. It's not a good thing. But I, again, I'm, I'm debt is a tool. It's either good or bad. It's usually what's in the heart. So if you buy, if you decide to get a car, the next question is, what is the most efficient way? What is going to help you live more intentional? What's going to put you more in control of that decision? And step number one is paying cash. Let's look at the pros. You don't have any interest. Awesome. You take that money. You pay cash. You have a car. You don't have money over here. Taking Dave Ramsey's advice at 12%, now you don't have that 12% mutual funds earning for you, but you have a car. You don't have to pay any interest. Person B is saying, listen, I'm going to go and get a car loan for less than 2% at a credit union, and I'm going to buy that same car, and I'm going to sit on this cash either for opportunities I'm going to invest this in 12%, which by the way, the math would crush Dave Ramsey because I'm taking someone else's money and earning, paying 2% and I'm earning. So I guess the, the theme here is you're either paying interest or you're losing interest. You're either paying interest or you're losing interest. I get where Dave Ramsey's being consistent because he cannot admit that debt is good or that there's good versions of debt because it would confuse his audience and they would go crazy and he would hurt more people because then people would justify and say, well, this is good debt because I feel good. But the reality is there is such a thing as good debt versus bad debt. It has nothing to do with buying a liability or an asset. It has everything to do with is this decision helping you become wealthier or less wealthy? Don't make a decision because of debt. But if you've made a decision from a, an investment to to how the most efficient way to purchase a house to the most efficient way to buy a car debt as a result could create more security, more wealth, more options, and you could be a better steward. Like we could go talk about Bible all day long and we could, we could say how this person is way better off because they're being a good steward because they understand how the U S dollars is based off of debt. All, all I'll say is that's the differences with Dave Ramsey is he, he talks about studies. He talks about debt is bad, but he's combining He's combining purchasing and consuming with debt, which I think he has to at this point to to not confuse the audience. But even even people that say only use debt uh, for assets and not liabilities, I think you're also like you're tying the the decision with debt together. And I'm saying they're two separate things. Make a decision number one. Have a framework. Can you afford this or not? And then when you make that decision, then reverse engineer. What's the most efficient way? And Dave Ramsey speaks out of both sides of his mouth because he says 12% mutual funds don't go into debt. And he's, he's essentially um, going to cost you millions of dollars if you follow his advice.